on. I am a Sadie Nardini and yoga with Adrian and Sydney Bond devotee. So this is my combination of my favorite moves. So usually if I'm gonna start out a yoga practice, I'm gonna start in child's pose with my toes together, knees out. And I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna get connected with my breath, inhaling, exhaling. And I will sit here for as long as I want. It could be even a minute. Then my next step is gonna to be to go to cat cow. And any time that I'm going into another position, I'm initiating it with my core. So if I'm here, I'm using my core to lift my body up and move myself here. And you're placing your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And so with this, you're drawing a line with your nose, inhale. And exhale, collapse your core and go into cat. And then cow, inhale and exhale. And you can do that many, many times. And then the next one I like to go in, which I learned from Sadie Nardini, is to go into beast. And this is before downward facing dog. So you're here, again, your hands are underneath your shoulders and your core is tight, everything is tight and your neck is loose and you're inhaling, exhale. And then when you feel ready, you articulate from your core and lift your body up with your core and then you walk your dog out, right? You don't wanna like go into a really, really steep uh, downward dog yet and you just take time here until you feel comfortable. And then I love Sadie Nardini's um, digestive waves that she does. So she articulates here from her core and she goes inhale, exhale and comes down. Then she goes, and then she just like does these waves back and forth. Gentle. You don't go all the way down into your plank. It's just gentle waves. And then she takes the waves down to the ground. She inhales and then she chaturangas down and then instead of going up into up dog you just come all the way down and then you place your fingers right here you you, you go with your fingertips and you give your digestive tract a massage you inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and you can do that over and over inhale and this helps so much with your digestion so you keep doing that and then um, depending on how you're feeling you can go back in and rest at any point. You can rest in um, child's pose. It doesn't matter how much you rest. It's not like you're getting less of a workout. You sit here, you recalibrate your breath, and then you move through slowly through this tabletop position, through beast, and back to um, downward facing dog in one fluid motion. And then um, the most basic yoga series, of course, is from down dog into your chaturanga series, which you're gonna inhale, exhale down, inhale into up dog, and then exhale into downward dog. You wanna master your breath. Breath. So again, that's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, articulating from here. Okay, so let's add some legs. So you're gonna inhale, lift your right foot up, but don't point it, but don't flex it. Just, just It's just sitting there, inhale. And this is Sadie Nardini. You're gonna come up and you're gonna hug this knee to your nose and inhale and then articulate it to your, or put it to your other elbow, inhale, and then exhale to this elbow. And you keep doing that maybe four to eight times. Inhale and come up, inhale, exhale to here, inhale and exhale to here and then inhale, and then you can go into your chaturanga series. The little difference, keep this foot up like this. So you're working the back of your core, exhale, and then up, and then back. Then the next thing you wanna do, you wanna go up with your left leg and inhale. Inhale again and exhale to the opposite elbow. Inhale and exhale to this elbow. You're working all sides of your obliques, everything, inhale. And then repeat it again, middle, across, inhale, and side. And then inhale, you're gonna go all the way up. And then same thing, you're gonna keep this leg up, go forward. Remember when you're doing the chaturanga, you wanna go forward, so you're going down like this. You don't wanna go down like that. So kind of slide forward, go down, and then inhale, and then exhale. Okay, so after you've done a flow, at least the way my teacher does it is, since that kind of got my heart rate up, I now want to do some yin. So that would be called yang yoga, or like, you know, 
more active yoga. So then you do a yin pose because your body's warm. So you can do something like pigeon. So you could come up back here and you can come in and do pigeon pose, right? And then you want to slowly get lower, leading with your chest, not curling like this. You want to inhale and lower, inhale and lower, inhale and lower, inhale and lower until you can get low, 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 and then you sit there. Okay, and so then now, here's a really fun stretch you can do. It's my favorite quad, quad stretch. You can lean up and grab this foot and just sit there and inhale. Exhale, just you know however much you wanna do that. So that's just a random one. Then you can switch legs with pigeon. Do this side where you're, again, working your way down with each exhale, getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And then you can come up and stretch this quad. Okay, so after you've done um, like some, I would call that yin yoga, you're ready to alternate now with some yang yoga. So here's where I love to do Sadie Nardini's Breath of Fire. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're down here, so you always wanna like transition nicely with your body. So you can come into tabletop, and you can come into beast, and then you can come into downward dog, because from downward dog, you can usually get into any pose that you want. That's why we always go back here, also because the inversion helps the blood in your brain. So um, if we're gonna work with fists of, fists of fire, you're gonna inhale your right leg and bring it forward, and you're gonna get here into a low lunge, okay? So a low, actually a low, low lunge would be with your knee on the floor. So you can do that or you can do high lunge right here. And so you're gonna get your hands up and you wanna remember that you are curling this in. You're not like that. You're curling it in so that you have a sense that the bottom rib is like coming down to meet your navel. But you're not hunching, but it's like, that's so important, especially for those of us that were dancers that did everything like this. You have to think lower ribs meeting your abs, okay? And then here you wanna inhale and exhale, <sighs> or you can do the fists here. Inhale, <sighs> and then inhale, <sighs> okay? And, and of course you can do that as long as you want. I have another fist of fire thing I'm gonna show you too. So other leg, inhale your left leg, come forward, and you're gonna find that high lunge, right? You're gonna get your form. Remember, these poses are not helpful if the form is wrong. You can hurt yourself or kind of waste your energy. So get your form right, and then you wanna inhale. With your tongue out, inhale. You can do that as much as you want. And it's really helping the psoas muscle here, stretching that out, okay? So then you're gonna go back, and you can downward dog it, whatever, la 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 la. And usually, you know, they like you to do like a chaturanga series through here, inhale, exhale. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the other fists of fire that I love. You put your feet together and then you bend and now you're gonna spring off using your quads, you're gonna spring off and try to float to the top. So you're gonna inhale and try to land softly there. I'm still working on that and then come up. So in between my fists of fire, I'm gonna do something a little more calm to bring my heart rate down a little bit. I'm gonna touch my toes together and leave a tiny space right here because I don't want my feet out at all. I want them exactly straight. So the toes are together, but there's gonna be a little space right there. And I'm gonna inhale and I'm gonna come up to mountain pose. And I'm gonna make sure in mountain pose that again, I'm not doing that like a, like a ballet dancer would do. I'm connecting my ribs to my um, belly button and I'm going like this. And then I'm coming into prayer. And I'm just gonna take a minute here to get back in touch with my breath. Then when I'm, I calm my heart rate down a little bit, then I'm gonna do another mountain pose. Inhale, mountain. Now instead of coming to prayer, I'm gonna dive forward like this, all the way down. And then I'm gonna come up into halfway lift. And when you do halfway lift, articulate it from your abs and think that someone is pulling something from the crown of your head out this way. So you're down like this and then halfway lift, 
and then down again. Now here, move your feet out and come into ragdoll. And this one, um, my yoga teacher kind of added this. So instead of just hanging here in ragdoll, go from like side to side, you're gonna get such amazing, amazing flow to your, um, to your head or to your you know brain with the blood and everything and you nod yes shake your head no nod yes like hitting like your chin gently to your chest and then hitting your ears to your arms it's just it's so nice there so just get everything out and make sure all the flesh is hanging off your face blah, 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 blah. then you're going to inhale go back to mountain inhale and exhale die Hug the back of your legs, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale. And then you're gonna go back, we're gonna do a series. You're gonna in, or you're gonna exhale down, inhale up, and go back into downward facing dog. Then now we're gonna float forward, you're gonna bend and jump. Oops, that wasn't very good. And then come up, one thing my teacher always says, if you fall out of a pose or make a mistake, that's totally fine, but yogis always get back in. Like, don't worry about it. So now we're gonna be here and we're gonna come feet distance apart. This is something I learned from Sadie. I don't know that I've seen anybody else do it. Maybe Adrienne's done it for her brain one. But anyway, you're gonna come up like this. Inhale. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> Notice my fists. And, and then like my hands are extended when I go. <sighs> Inhale. Out. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> I think on Adrienne's Brain one, she has you do this for like an entire minute. Okay, you can do that for a long time. So that's definitely yang yoga. So after that, you've got your heart rate up, then you definitely wanna go into some yin. So from here, I might go into tree pose. So I would come here and I would find my, um, two things I do before going into tree pose is I make sure this foot, I am I'm putting weight on all four corners. I'm not like that, I'm not like that. All four corners of my feet, and I think of a big, fat, straight root going all the way down. Then the next thing I need to find is my dristy point, which is what my eyes are going to be focused on. So I'm choosing the Hawaii Temple in that picture right there because that's right in front of my thing. So those are gonna be my anchors, my leg and my eyes. And so I'm gonna inhale. And then I'm going to bring this up and place my foot right there. And then I'm going to bring my focus here. So again, the two things that I'm focusing on, my standing leg, keeping it balanced between all four corners because it's a little, you know, tiny little movements to keep you steady and then staring at the Hawaii temple. And then if I feel like I've kind of got it, I'm going to keep my eyes focused on that dristy point and I'm opening up into full tree pose right here. But if I don't get this set up, I can't stay balanced in this. Okay, and so then I would do the same on the other side. I'm gonna anchor this leg, all four corners, find my dristy point. I'm focusing on my standing leg, all four corners of it. And I'm focusing on the temple there. So when you alternate yin, yang, yin, yang, you're in essentially getting a gentle hit workout because you're getting your heart rate up and then you're calming, heart rate up, calming. Okay, so I think I'm pretty anchored here. So now I'm gonna try going up. Always breathing. Okay, so now that I've kind of brought my heart rate down, I'm gonna go into another gentle flow series and this is probably my favorite one so you go back into down dog this is kind of how I start everything so here in down dog right leg is going to come up I'm going to bring the left leg up and then I love this it goes through but I windmill in to um, warrior two and if you can make that flow together it just feels amazing so again you're here I'll do it again right leg is up it comes forward and in one fluid motion you're into warrior one and in warrior one you're never just sitting there it's so active you're thinking okay is this foot facing forward and is this foot facing to the side and am I touching all four corners I'm not doing that I'm on all four corners and then is are my ribs 
Again, one of my issues is hyperextending my posture, thinking that's good posture, but I want to take these ribs, connect them into my navel, and then out here. And there's a feeling of lengthening, lengthening. And then here, I love this Sadie Nardini. You're going to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then once you're here, you're going to reach out and go into Peaceful Warrior right here. You're going to enjoy that nice side body stretch. And then you're going to windmill over and go into Triangle. And if you can work it down to where it's like you're putting your body between two planes of glass and you work it to where you can look up at your hand, inhale and exhale into the twist, inhale and exhale into the twist. And then you can do that more times. You can go back into Peaceful Warrior and you can even go into here instead of full to triangle. You could, this is a kind of an easier flow. If you don't wanna to go to triangle, you can just go here. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into downward dog. Again, you can get to almost any yoga pose from here because either you're gonna put your foot up and do something or you can jump or walk to the front of your mat and do something. So this is a time to bring blood oxygen to your brain and to reset your breath. Okay, so to reset my breath, what I mean by that is I get it in a rhythm so that the next time I lift up my leg, it's gonna be on an inhale. So inhale. Exhale, now remember I'm gonna windmill into warrior two on the other side, right there. So again, four corners of my feet and I'm here and I'm lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. This energy pushing right here is so cleansing. I don't know why, I haven't really studied why. Another thing my teacher tells me, look at your hands. You do that in hula too, I don't know, but look at your hands okay so now we've done that a few times now you're going to reach and go into peaceful warrior i'm just going to hang here and then when you're ready go into triangle remember you're trying to get yourself between two planes of glass looking up at your hand and inhaling every exhale you're surrendering more to the twist and remember the dull ache is okay but no sharp or electric pain ever like Adrian says, do what feels good. If something doesn't feel good, don't do it, do something else. Okay, and so now, I forgot what I was doing. We can go back into Peaceful Warrior and come into this kind of side stretch thing. Okay, so now um, I would probably, as I'm getting towards the end of my short practice here, I would probably definitely do some twisting, especially since I have digestive issues. Twist, twist, twists are so good. So I'm coming back here into lunge. I place my hand right here and I suck up my gut so that I'm not gonna hurt my back. I suck up my navel to my bottom rib and I'm gonna inhale and I'm gonna just gonna enjoy this twist here. And I can do that for as long as I can. And then from here, go back into downward facing dog. And then I'm gonna set my breath, inhale, bring, let's see, I think it's the other leg left leg sorry bring that through and then I'm gonna do oh, sorry I was wrong this leg and hand right here and then I'm gonna do this one okay so if you want to do a little bit more advanced on this remember you can come up off the ground and twist this way with every exhale you're just gonna twist and twist more and then you can go back into downward facing dog or you can just do a quick switch here if you're kind of wanting to speed through this and come up like this every exhale i'm trying to twist more okay so reset my breath probably going to do another chaturanga series where i'm inhaling exhaling inhaling and then i'm probably going to come down now so here's where i'll do some of my favorite ground exercises as i'm cooling down heading for shavasana so this is my favorite shoulder stretch exercise ever so you put one arm out and then the opposite arm is going to put um 
itself flat down right against your chest here. And that same foot, you're gonna bring it over and place it on the ground. And you're just gonna breathe here. And you can like move your neck and look up if you want, whatever feels good with your neck. I like giving it a nice stretch right there. But this is such a amazing shoulder stretch that you just would never get in any other kind of workout besides, besides yoga. It also stretches your upper back in a really cool way. Then I would do the other side. Breathing the entire time. Every exhale, you're releasing more. Again, I'm gonna. I'm personally gonna bring my neck because that feels good. That might not feel good to everyone. Okay, then from here, um, I some other poses that I like from this position is I might hold my feet like this, and I forgot what this pose is called. Um, but this feels good to me. I like that, and I'm focusing on contracting my glutes to protect my lower back here and I'm letting my head just go. But this is a really good exercise to stretch the pectoral muscles and the this front of the foot here, and also um, obviously to strengthen your glutes. Remembering that your core is from here to here. Your core isn't just your abs, it includes your this entire support mechanism here. Okay, so I probably flip onto my back now at this point and do some of my favorite back things. If I hadn't already done pigeon, I could do a supine pigeon here, which just means pigeon on your back, but I've already done that. So I might do some windshield wipers here for my back, or I might do the exercise where you cross a leg over an eagle and you go to the side and breathe, inhale. Or if you're up for some more yang, this is my favorite crunch in the entire world which I learned from my teacher. So whatever, so your legs are an eagle or a supine eagle or whatever it's called. Um, and that same, same side goes under into this eagle, okay? So you're right here and then you crunch right here. One, two, three, it feels so good. And it's like, I don't know why, it's like the most enjoyable crunch you'll ever do. So maybe we'll do eight here, whatever you wanna do. Seven, I don't know how many I've done. Eight. And then you just switch sides. So cross the other leg under, and then one, two. And it gets your abs too. I don't know, there's something about having your legs crossed and having your arms crossed. It like calls forth your entire abs. And if you wanna get your low abs, you can, you can lower this even lower. And if you wanna get your high abs, all you do is add this. So then you're getting your obliques, low abs, upper abs, if you do it this way, like this. But your bottom if your back is coming off the ground you have to stop wherever that is you because that'll hurt your back so just go as low as you can still keeping your back flat against the ground so you see that where I'm lifting up going stretching up and then letting my legs go down it's such an amazing exercise okay um, then of course happy baby is another wonderful one this is great you can do that for as long as you want you know that one and then butterfly pose for a hip opener. This one's very, very simple, but so effective just here. And breathing, breathing. And then here's some, a wonderful inversion is this simple inversion where you're, you see my chin up against and my neck's getting this nice massage here. And then you can work towards plow, which I think I just barely got, but that's um, a nice way to, stretch the back of your legs. So you can sit in that if that feels good. And then my favorite exercise from Adrienne, which is her famous one where you grab the, this part of your toes and you just rock like a little kid like this. And it feels so good. And it's like the best thing for your mood and your brain. In fact, it, besides the, the breath of fire or whatever, that stand-up exercise where you're swooshing down this would probably be my second one if I just needed to activate my mental faculties really quickly because it massages your back. It's fun and it um, gets blood flowing to your brain. So that's a fun one. Of course, there's so many more. Anyway, so then um, 
after I had done my workout, again, focusing on yin yang, yin yang, um, I would think about any of my body that possibly felt neglected. I'm gonna just sit there for a minute. My teacher calls it free form. So I'm just gonna think, hmm, do I feel like maybe, I want it like Kathy, I know you have really good Chinese splits. So maybe you wanna like do your Chinese splits. This is about as much Chinese as I get. Anyway, so maybe that feels good. Or one of the things I love, I love to stretch for my plantar fasciitis tendencies. I love this because it stretches out my Achilles tendon. And I just love sitting. This just feels so good to me, just sitting like that. So think about what feels good. And then once you've done that, find your Shavasana, whether it's on your back or on, on your tummy. And as you're laying here, um, the purpose for Shavasana is not just for meditation. There's a physiological reason for it, which is to let your body assimilate and apply all of the amazing work that you just did for it. You just toned almost every muscle in the body. You just stretched almost every muscle in the body. And so your body is going to change as a result of this exercise. And so this Shavasana, not only is it a meditative state, but it gives your body a chance to reform to assume its new form. And your breathing should not be like yoga breathing or anything, it's just natural breathing. And you should be in some posture that signifies surrender. Surrender to the process of life and surrender to God's will, surrender to your day and just breathing. And if meditation is hard for you, I just focus on my breathing. I just think inhale exhale and I pay attention to how my breath feels as it's traveling in and out of my body. And you want your Shavasana to be at least three minutes. They have done so many studies that show that you burn so much during the Shavasana. Like it's crazy. So the only thing I didn't put in this practice that I'm thinking, wow, I really do that every single day, but I do it at the gym too. It's not necessarily yoga. I actually, well, I learned it from a, a Tampa Bay, um, what, what are, what's the football team that won? Buccaneers. Buccaneers. So they have a yoga um, specialist that works with their team. And you can find this football yoga workout on YouTube where this yoga teacher is working with this football player. And so I learned this from her. So she said um, that these are like the never stretched muscles for athletes or whatever. So basically, you after you've done, um, you know, your basic like lunge stretch, you're going to you're working this um, this psoas muscle, but this is how you're gonna intensify the stretch. So remember, you're tucking under your bum, you're not, not hyperextending. Now you're gonna do this. You're gonna reach this hand up, you're gonna grab this, L, this wrist, you're gonna inhale and take it over. And then you're gonna alternate looking up and then looking down. It stretches a different part of it. Like when I move this and move down, it shows how interconnected our whole body is because the stretch is different just from where I switch that. Then you're gonna turn this way and stretch like this. And then you can add this, we already did this today, but you can add this quad stretch. And then you stretch the back of the leg, etc. So let's do the other side so you can repeat this. So again, you're gonna sit here into the psoas muscle, but one of the reasons why you wanna tuck your abs in too, it's not just so you don't hyperextend your back, but you never wanna just dump into these lunge positions. It's really bad for your joints. You always want it to be active and like your abs are kind of lifting a little bit. You're not just dumping into it. So you're gonna um, inhale this movement, grab your wrist and go over. Oh my gosh, the stretch here is unreal. You don't get this in any other position I've ever found. So you're gonna inhale, exhale, and I'm gonna look up and down. It's gonna be a different stretch. Inhaling and exhaling, then I'm gonna turn Stretch this way. Again, I would do a lot more breaths here if I had more time. And then I'm gonna stretch my quad, the other leg, I'm gonna stretch the back of the leg. And then finally, something I do every day, learn this from my yoga teacher. She said that as we get into our 40s and 50s, so many of us are plagued with sciatica. And she said, people think it's because of this and that. And she said, the reason why is because we do not stretch our IT band. Flexibility protects against injury. She says that over and over. Flexibility in your muscles protects you against inj injury. So if you're in your 50s and you do have a fall, but you do yoga all the time, your body is going to bounce back. So this is the crazy IT stretch. So she said, you put your leg up, you cross your body, grab this outside, 
and then pull your leg over just a teeny bit. If you pull it all the way over, it's gonna stretch a different thing. It's just like a teeny bit. And oh my gosh, you're gonna feel it all the way up into your sciatic nerve. So just inhale here. This is so applicable to just so many things. And this is something that so many people struggle with. I would normally do that for longer. Let's do the other side. So again, I'm putting this foot up, flexing it. It has to be flexed. Taking this arm, crossing, and bringing it over just a little. Just like six inches. And again, it's ideal if you can um, do these stretching, obviously when your body's warm, so your muscles are more pliant. That's why I love yin and yang yoga because the yang just keeps your, the fire going through your body, gets your heart rate up, and then you're so flexible, you're not flexible, but your muscles are ready to stretch for the yin, and you go back into the yang. Like I said, it's a gentle hit. So that's my favorite kind of yoga, but I love any kind of yoga. Okay, I love you.